How's it going everybody, I am DMGTO and today we're going to be looking at some more tanks, some higher tiered heavy tanks in particular. I'm going to probably be playing the M451, the MX M451 if you're not aware of this thing. This thing is the tier 9 non-auto loading heavy tank in the French line. It's a pretty damn good vehicle, it's basically like an M103 but it isn't shit. <laughs> pretty much the best way to describe this thing. So, other tank I'm not 100% sure what I want to play yet but might go for the Type 4 heavy, this 14cm gun is a lot of fun to play. Uh, is a lot of fun to use, and then there's the old reliable, the E75. So, I haven't 100% decided what I want to play yet, but I'm going to jump into the M451 because the M451, just in general, is a lot of fun to play because it has very strong frontal armor, it has a 120mm gun, which is devastatingly accurate and consistent, and just in general, the tank is flexible, but the only real problem with it is it doesn't have very good side armor, which is interesting considering the way I see a lot of people play this thing. I, I see a lot of people play this tank and try to side scrape it, and I'm always just looking at it, just going, hmm. Literally, if I pull like one degree further around this corner, I can pan you. <laughs> and that's usually what I do, and you usually just see them trying to like run away as quickly as possible as soon as I pan them through their through their shoulder plate, because like this area here, I believe it's like 200 meter, 200 or 220 millimeters. Uh, I could be thinking of the tier 10 in that regard, but. It's such an easy area to penetrate whenever somebody's trying to side scrape this thing, so you never side scrape this tank, ever. It's just not worth it trying to do that. Basically what I do in this thing is I, I try to play it kind of like how I play an AS6. So, I point the front arm around the corner, hide the right hand, or, so uh, as an example, if I'm coming around a right hand side corner, so my gun is pointing this direction, I'm coming around a corner, turning right. What I do is I cover the shoulder plate on this side, and then just have my armor heavily angled on the front and then just poke my, poke my front armor around the corner far enough just so I can pump shots into the enemy team. Works remarkably well in this tank. This tank is probably one of the best tanks in the game that I've found for that like just general like play style. It's, it's unbelievably good at it because it, it's lower front plate even though it's not the best armored it's still reasonably well armored and it's pretty well sloped as well which means it actually catches people out fairly often and let's get a shot in you. Hopefully somebody can kill that Batcha 12T. And actually, now that, now that I think about the Batcha 12T, there's an Ace Tanker coming on the channel for that thing, which was pretty entertaining. <laughs> that tank, I really did not like it whenever I first played it, but now that I've now that I kind of learned what to do in it from Frontlines mode, that tank is just so much fun to play. <laughs> it's just such a it, it's just such an annoying little shit of a tank, and it's amazing. It's so funny. <laughs> Like I was at a tier nine game whenever I was whenever I got me a tanker and that thing, and there's an object 705 that tried to rush me early on, and wow, yeah, that's the accuracy on this gun for you there. There was an object 705 that was trying to get some shots into me, and he came up over a ridge, and I just tracked him in place and just started pumping shots into him, and from like an angle where he couldn't really do much to me. And here's an example of where you can kind of see what I'm talking about with this tank. I just kind of poked my front arm around the corner, both of them fired, none of them got any damage. Now. You do have to be a little bit careful about your front about your front drive wheel coming too far around the corner, because if you do that, then chances are you're going to get panned. I don't really need to go for his turret weak point of honest, I should probably just go for his front for his front turret because I have 257 penetration. That's not going to have any problems with that thing. It's like 230, I think it is, frontal turret armor. So I should really just fire the front of the turret. I mean, that's what I do when I'm fighting the Maijin. So both of their artilleries have now fired. That's good to know. So I should probably try and make something happen here while the artilleries are reloading. Because artilleries are really annoying in this sort of circumstance. And you're in a really annoying position as well. Hmm. Conquerors just in general. I don't know what it is about that particular tank. But all of them. Super Conquerors, Conquerors, all of them. Do nothing but fire premium rounds. It's actually ridiculous. Like, it's actually genuinely enraging just to see such a strong tank, that, a, a tank that's already r remarkably powerful and remarkably strong. They just use nothing but premium rounds in it, just, so it, it's effectively like a tier 11 or tier 12. <laughs> I'm honestly tempted to just call it like a tier 12 tank, because you can't do any damage to it when it's hold down, unless you fire HE rounds, which is kind of ineffective, and the tank just in general has a devastating gun. I really wish that thing got 7 degrees of gun depression rather than getting 10. 
If it had 7 degrees of gun depression rather than the 10, it would have actually been balanced in some shape or form. But because it has 10 degrees, it's ridiculous. I, I really hate that tank now. It's pretty much, it pretty much feels like the T-54 of tier, of tier 10 for some reason. Like, I, I, I don't get it, because it's not as if that tank has penetration problems. It really doesn't. And, well, that's an interesting situation. You're in an interesting <laughs> situation right now, mate, aren't you? <laughs> I'm going to load HG rounds and just finish this guy, because this guy's just completely just screwed himself here. <laughs> I'm just going to sit here and just fire HG rounds into his underside. This is convenient. <laughs> oh, this is amazing. I saw he was like approaching like an awkward way. But goddamn, that's hilarious. That, that's amazing. But let's just continue on here. Now, I did kind of leave my teammates a little bit. And yeah, the T-44 came to try and help his buddy. But, well, yeah, you're a little bit too slow. The T-44 is a good tank. But in this sort of circumstance, I don't really think he's going to be able to do that much. And am I too tall to go through here? Nope, just about to fit. Come on, gun, reload. Finish him off as well. Yeah, I actually got kind of stuck there on the my roof of my tank. Actually, got stuck on the on the top of the of the drive through there. I was just like, "What the hell?" I wasn't actually expecting to actually get stuck there. <laughs> but I guess because I was like driving on like the left hand side of it a little bit, and the, my like capolas on the top got stuck. And here's the annoying artillery from earlier. I was genuinely expecting him, expecting him to shoot me. I really just need to like, just go for kills on artillery rather than try and be sneaky and go for go for like tracking damage as well because I'm not going to be able to kill him in one shot which is unfortunate but well it doesn't really matter too much but I'm guessing you can probably see kind of why I like this tank so much I tried to go for penetration on his uh, turret and that artillery is probably going to nuke me now because I wasn't paying attention to him So that's that one dealt with. Now there's the GW Tiger P. God damn it. Both of those tanks have exactly the same gun, just one's tier 9, one's tier 8. Getting shot at by those things is not fun. So they have a T20 prototype and a VKB back there. Gonna just try and push forward here and hopefully not get nuked by the T20 prototype, because if he's firing premium mounts, he could actually do some serious damage to me. That was unexpected. Hmm. I didn't actually think he would be sitting there. I thought he would have been sitting in the uh, dip. I was expecting the T20 prototype to be the one to get to get a shot into me, but th that was kind of unexpected. Let's see, so the VKB is back there. He's probably yeah. I'm gonna wait for the Type Five to or Type Five, no Type Four, to get over here because well, he will probably help out a substantial amount on this. Well, unless he's not actually looking my direction, which case yes, I'll just take some free damage. And yeah, that guy just got absolutely obliterated. But that was a pretty solid game. I did farm a bunch of damage on a on a Pajito who rolled over. Or no, it wasn't a Pajito. Sorry, it was a standard B. So yeah, bit of a cheap, bit of a cheap game, bit of cheap X. Be funny, you have to admit. Just that guy, just that guy, just parking sideways on right where the tunnel entrance was was amazing. <laughs> and yeah, even 1300 XP, not enough to ace this thing. That just shows you how well people do in this tank. This tank really is phenomenal. It's such a good vehicle. And here's the most bizarre thing about this tank. I haven't unlocked this gun and I haven't unlocked the tracks. So this tank can actually get more maneuverable. And probably a little bit faster as well. But because I'm just being awkward and want to unlock the M454 before I actually before I actually unlock the gun or the tracks, I'm just kind of avoiding like doing anything else because I'm pretty much just doing this thing's grind with the stock gun the upgrade turret and well the engine let's see the engine uh, yeah you get the engine for the 65t so i already had that unlocked so yeah it's actually kind of bizarre thinking about that again just how bad 65t is in comparison to this thing but let's jump into the e75 the kind of counter to the m454 because both of these tanks are relatively quick both of them have around about a 35 kilometer an hour average speed although the e75 overall is Quite a lot slower because its part of weight ratio is pretty much 
like it's it's like nine point eight or something, whereas the M four fifty four has like a fifteen horsepower per ton ratio, so it's it feels substantially quicker accelerating, but the E seventy five still is not a slow vehicle. It's still a pretty damn good vehicle overall, and you can you can definitely tell why this thing was like was like the favorite tier nine heavy tank for years in the game. Now, when it comes to competitors with this uh, competitors with this thing. I used to always compare this thing to the ST1, and I still think that's fair, because the ST1 is probably the closest in playstyle to this thing, but there really isn't another vehicle that I can think of off the top of my head which has like a 490 alpha damage gun that has this sort of playstyle. Like, like, that is just like a pure like side scraper. Because even the Type 4 Heavy I don't really consider to be a pure side scraper because it has kind of like a similar playstyle to the M454, where you poke, poke the front of your tank around the corner and then just hide the shoulder plate on the on the inner side. That just makes it substantially more... Uh, that just makes that tank substantially more usable in most circumstances. That's why I don't really mind if they nerf the uh, if they nerf the shoulder plates on the Type 5 Heavy whenever they rebalance it, which I'm hoping they do in the near future, because... Still do not like that tank, do not like facing that tank at all. So, their E75 is heading over towards here as well. They have no artillery, which is handy for us. T95, where is that guy at? Oh shit. Damn it, I hadn't noticed T95 is not actually heading this direction. Which is unfortunate. Because the T95, over on this flank, would be a really, really solid breakthrough vehicle. Also, something I've tried to do a lot more in this tank, just uh, just more recently than I've driving it again, is just snapshot and shots off with this 128mm gun. Because you can't miss well these days because its aiming time was drastically... Okay, that was a critical hit, not actually damage. The aiming time was pretty substantially improved whenever, whenever it was buffed, probably like a year ago. It went from like 2.9 seconds aiming time to about 2.4. It's a pretty substantial change, and it made the tank a lot more flexible in these sort of circumstances. That's unfortunate to have a batch of 12T right there. That guy poked around the corner further. Ah. Yeah, that's the problem with shooting the, shooting the defenders. It's really difficult to actually consistently hit their weak points. And like the actual roof armor, that thing as well is apparently good enough to avoid being overmatched by a gun like this, which is a surprise. But he's not doing a good job angling his tank. He's kind of on like a downward slope, which kind of mitigates the armor angling on his tank just in general. Yep, and there's the 1385. The 1385 has finally made an appearance. We need to try and kill the C75 and get as much damage into him as possible as quickly as we can. Although I will take killing this guy if I can. Nice. Okay. So, T95 is right there. ISM is understandably kind of trying to like avoid getting shot by this guy. I'm going to rush this guy here. I'm going to shot into his engine and then try and push him around a little bit because my tank is actually heavier than his. Going from memory. Now, he has the 150. Or no, wait, is that the 120? It is the 120. Yeah, I was going to say that gun looks longer than normal. And yeah, here comes his... Here comes his pretty RNG dependent armor, but considering we have multiple tanks here, it should be relatively easy for us to outcompete this T95 in this circumstance, although I am getting trolled by my gun a little bit here. D75 is still alive, so we do need to be very conscious of that. This guy is... ah shit, he killed the ISM, that's unfortunate. Got one shot in his lower front plate. Yet again, I'm still refusing to fire premium rounds just because I'm a pain in the ass that way. Like, I prefer just, like, winning an upfront fight. Now, why did their E75 not take advantage of this? This T95 is doing a great job distracting us, but he didn't take advantage of that. That's bizarre to me. I mean, the E75 is more than heavy enough to push a defender corpse out of the road. See, like, there's the Jagtiger idiot coming around the corner. Um, he's actually trying to take advantage of this situation a little bit. But I'm going to just try and like get into the face of this Yag Tiger idiot and try and finish him off if I can. So that's that guy dealt with. Now it's just the Lorraine. The Lorraine's going to be my priority target because fighting head to head with the E75 is something I'm not too concerned with. 
because both of us are E75s, and I have a 53 TP on on most of his health. Let's back up. Yeah, that was a bit of a mistake, dude. You poked around the corner just a little bit too far, and just allowed me to get that easy shot into your track. And depending, wow, you've not a very good crew skill, have you? That was like a nine second repair time. Hmm. This guy, I think, is. Yeah, he's not going to be able to win this fight. Me and me on 53 TP together here are not really going to have too many problems finishing this guy off. Leopard PTS back there as well. This E75 not pushing forward whenever that T95 was doing that distraction earlier was a pretty big mistake. See, at this sort of range, it gets a lot easier to hit that weak point. That weak point consistently. And yeah, I I was very weary of actually coming around that corner because that corner is. That corner is pretty dodgy when it comes to tank destroyers just sitting in the background because if they're just sitting in the background there's really not that much you can do about it because they're just going to sit there in stealth. There's no real reason for them to come towards you. But at least we've won this flank. I'm not going to push forward on this flank because it's just not worth it. All that's going to happen is I'm going to die. Like they have a Yag Tiger back there. Uh, probably like, or oh no, Lap PTA is on the other flank. I was going to guess the Lapper PTM might be over there, but the Lurian 40T is probably over on this flank somewhere. Don't particularly want to get permatract and then Nook Bay Yag Tiger. So we're going to head back towards the BS trying to defend it a bit here. Well, admit though, my tank feels a little sluggish because... I was kind of expecting it to get around a little bit quicker than this, but... Well, I suppose it's a good thing I'm heading back towards the BS now, although I actually knows that our RTNA5 is actually still alive. It was a really interesting choice to bring a T95 over there, considering that thing has 5 degrees of gun depression. Seems like a really interesting choice. Although the STRV-103 going around behind the enemy tanks could actually win that for us. No idea how much health these guys are on right now, because my tank's going to take a minute to actually get over towards our cap. See, this is the weakness of the E75. When it comes to climbing hills and just climbing things just in general, that's where this tank struggles. It doesn't like climbing things. So going on flat terrain, it's fine. But climbing stuff, it's part of weight ratio really starts to come into play there. Like you would notice the uh, MXM454, or 51, sorry, would feel significantly faster than this thing on, uh, on like, hilly terrain. But in level terrain, they actually don't feel too far, too far apart in terms of overall speed. That's unfortunate. The IS-3 managed to kill the STRV, but the STRV managed to kill our type, our kill their type, type 59. Their IS-3 is all the way over there. IS-3. Wow. Okay. Nice job to that STRV there. I came all the way over here for nothing. <laughs> Took so long, and well, yeah. I still kind of feel like I should just hang out near the base. Gonna be honest, because I'm not gonna be able to make it back to the base in time if I go over there somewhere. Because, well, you can see here, my tank's not particularly quick climbing hills. So I kind of feel like I should just kind of hover near the base and just kind of protect it to make sure no one caps it while we're not looking. Um, which right, I'll stay near base. Because the Lorraine 40T is a one hit. Oh, wow, the Yag Tiger came this way. That's unexpected. The Yag Tiger coming here, that was not the tank I expected, which means the Lorraine 40T is probably over here as well. If it took that long for the Yag Tiger to get here, the Lorraine 40T is definitely here somewhere. I'm gonna move outside of the range of this Yag Tiger here, because the Yag Tiger got an easy hit into me there. The Lorraine is my main concern now, because I don't know where he is. Good thing is though we do have a significant numbers advantage over the Yag Tiger. And the Yag Tiger does kinda need us to come towards him in like a like an obvious way. For him to actually win this fight. But where's this Lorraine? This Lorraine. I not knowing where he is is really bothering me. Cause I'm a one shot for that guy now. I'm well wait. Um uh, 
Yeah, I'm gonna wait for these guys to like catch up a little bit because I don't really feel like I should just rush in blindly because rushing in blindly seems like a terrible idea. Especially considering I'm only on 270 health, like what would be the point of me rushing in? Oh, wow, he went around the other side, right. Didn't really expect that. So the rain 40T, how much health does this guy have? He has about 700 health, right. See, he can take a hit easily from the Ag Tiger. He killed Lorraine, nice. Unfortunately though, the Ag Tiger is just reload and... Rate of Fire was able to do that. Yeah, my tank, I don't really trust it to be quick enough to actually like fall away from the Ag Tiger. I'll wait for the T95. Because me rushing in here is not a particularly good idea because this guy here. I went for his track. The game kind of screwed me a little bit there. This is such a weird circumstance. Jesus, imagine trying to like get into a turn and fight with an E75. <laughs> Damn it! Ah. Uh, managed to hold off just long enough there. <laughs> Holy shit. Yeah, I know I could probably could have played that moment against the actor a little bit better, but that was pretty funny. <laughs> a turn in fighting in the 75, that's one thing I don't think. So, let's see what it was like in that one. Oh, I actually got a mission done too. Uh, let's just go on to the next mission, don't really care too much about but doing anything else here with that there. Wow, 1400 XP, 6400 damage, not bad. I really like the 75, it's still, it's still a very, very good vehicle. Even though it's barely changed in the last couple of years, it's still an extraordinarily good vehicle. So, yeah. Let me know what you guys think of this video in the comment section below. That was a bit of a longer one because I can't wait to show off two tier 9 vehicles and just what they're like. So, yeah. Let me know what you guys think of this video in the comment section below. Hopefully you enjoyed it. I will see you in the next one.